Hello, in this video we're going to drive the consumer's demand from the Cobb Douglas utility function. Here's our consumer's utility function. Good 1 and good 2 represented by the subscripts. The price of good 1 is P subscript 1 and the price of good 2 is P subscript 2. The consumer's income is represented by I. Given all of that, let's solve for the consumer's demand for good one and good two. We'll start with getting the marginal utility of good one, taking the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to x subscript one. Doing that, the exponent on the x subscript one variable comes down in front, so that's where the four is coming from. And then we're going to subtract one from that exponent. Simplifying that up, here is the marginal utility of good one. And the marginal utility of good 2, taking the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good 2, x subscript 2. The 3 on good 2 comes down in front. We subtract 1 from that exponent, and we're left with this result. And the 3 minus 1 here in the exponent just simplify down to 2, and that is the marginal utility of good 2. Next thing we'll do is form the marginal rate of substitution. The MRS, marginal rate of substitution, is the marginal utility of good 1 divided by the marginal utility of good 2. Taking our results from over here on the left, marginal utility of good 1 on top, marginal utility of good 2 on the bottom. Now we're going to simplify this a little bit. This x subscript 1 raised to the third power, we're going to move that down into the denominator. And then we're just going to add the exponents on good 1 in the denominator. And that'll just leave us with good 1 here raised to the power of 1. Then, going back on top here, uh, looking in the denominator, uh, we're going to move that x subscript 2 squared into the numerator. Doing that, we're just going to add the exponents on the x subscript 2 term. Simplifying we get this result. So we got the marginal rate of substitution. Now we're going to set that equal to the ratio of the prices. So setting the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price of good 1 divided by the price of good 2. Right here. And now let's solve this for good 1, x subscript 1, multiplying both sides through by good 1 gives us the x subscript 1 term over here. And now I want to get rid of the ratio of these prices by multiplying through by its reciprocal. So multiplying through by price of good 2 divided by price of good 1 leaves us with this result. All right, the next thing we'll do is recall the budget constraint, which is the consumer's income multiplied by the spending on good 1 plus the spending on good 2. So where I have good 1 here in the budget constraint, I'm going to replace that with this result here. So I'm going to make that substitution for x subscript 1. I'm just going to plug in our result from the prior step. And now we're going to simplify this. Uh, what we're going to see happen here is that the price of good 1 and price of good 1, those terms will cancel. So doing that, we're left with this result. And now I'm going to, on the right hand side, I'm going to factor out x subscript 2. So factoring x subscript 2 out, we're left with this result. And now we can add what's in parentheses. We're going to get a common like denominator here. Getting a common like denominator and now adding what's in parentheses. We get this result. And then our final step is this result in parentheses. We're going to just multiply everything through by its reciprocal to move it over to the left-hand side. So doing that, we're left with the demand for good 2. The demand for good 2 equals 3 times money income, the consumer's income, divided by 7 times the price of good 2. Now let's get the demand for good 1. So the demand for good one, uh, what I'm going to do here, uh, what I'm doing over here on the far right, uh, we have this result 
for good one, where I have good two in it, I'm going to replace that with the three I divided by seven P uh, subscript two. So I'm just going to make a substitution, plugging this result into this equation. So substitution is over here. And now simplifying, you'll notice that the price of good two terms will cancel. The three and the three over here will cancel and we're left with the demand for good one. Okay, that is it.